Welcome to Digital Ship webinar. Today's topic is reducing cost in bunkering through digital technology and collaboration. Our three guest speakers will share how you can control your bunker operations proactively. I'm happy to introduce you to Leon Gomans, co-founder and CEO of TechPlay, Marianne Shaw, co-founder and CMO of Claritex, and Jan Anders Riste, senior consultant at DNV. TechPlay, Claritex, and DNV are also sponsoring this webinar. We're expecting lots of your questions. Please type them to the Q&A box anytime throughout the webinar. Now I'm inviting Carl Jeffrey, founding editor of Digital Ship, to start off our conversation. So what we're looking at today is to reduce the cost of bunkering with digital technology and collaboration. And there might be some really material savings opportunities. So there's a quick illustration. If you think that shipping companies spend 30% of all their operational spend on bunkers, and if you think of that, 20% of that goes on managing the bunkering operations, the other 80% is going on the fuel itself. And if you think more efficiency could cut that cost by 20%, then the potential savings in terms of all shipping costs are 0.3 times 0.2 times 0.2 is 1.2%, which is worth having. So I'm, I'm going to ask you what you think about this in a couple of minutes. But uh, what we think the savings can be achieved. So the way bunkering has been done and to, up till now is what people call in technology world a waterfall way where one thing happens and another thing happens, the ship arrives and deliveries get arranged and then the surveys and then something else. And if there's any problems, that means the ships are arriving late and leaving late, late and nobody minds too much when people were planning on paper and then they were planning on spreadsheets. So today we've got technologies we can use to do it much more, much better coordinated and a uh, reduce the costs, but the um, question is, are, are we using them? And there's other things going on now. We've got the decarbonisation requirements with new fuels, which make things much more complex, which can also give much more reasons for delays. And also with everything getting more expensive on fuels, that means any inefficiency gets more and more expensive. But on the other hand, if any company can master how to decarbonise at low costs, there's big market rewards available. Um, we're going to hear today about LNG as well. Now, we've got an estimate that when you fuel a ship with LNG, the amount of money which goes on the LNG itself, the fuel is as little as 50% of the total price you pay. So the other 50% are all on the logistics of, a, of getting LNG to your ship. So there may be room to save money here. So to do um, make improvements, we need more than technology. We need a willingness to share data and perhaps we need standardization so everyone is talking the same language. So we've got three companies today who've got different solutions to this. Claritex is based in Singapore, is going to talk about digital tools to help coordinate and optimize bunker calls, keeping vessels and ship agents and ship suppliers and captains in closer coordination. Then TechPlay in Rotterdam is going to talk about using digital technology to reduce waste in port call and bunkering. So you get shared awareness and better predictions of arrival and departure. And they'll talk about what they call context brokering, how you can sort of sell information about what's going on so people can see how to reduce waste. And DMV is going to talk about their fuel boss service, which helps companies bunker with LNG better and manage the costs of doing that. So, Fader, if you can bring up the poll now, I'd like to ask the audience what you thought about this, um, this idea we started off with. And we'll ask you again if your views have changed. So, um, the question is, what percentage of all operations costs for a shipping company, including the fuel costs, do you think might be saved by more efficient bunker operations? And that includes um, the time of reducing the, the savings you make from reducing the time the ship spends in the port. If you're spending uh, so, so that, that so um, so we're, I, I gave some numbers at the beginning, came up with 1.2 percent, but that's all very rough. So we're asking you, do you think it's half a percent or half to one and a half percent or above one and a half percent. So if you'd like to enter your number, if you haven't already. And uh, Fida, do you want to show us what the results are? Okay, well, that's uh, that's phenomenal. <laughs> I'm not sure we're gonna see much improvement on that over if you already think that's uh, one and a half percent, but that should uh, show why we're doing this webinar and why, why it's exciting. So um, now I'm going to invite our first speaker, Marianne Chu, who's a co-founder of Clevit Text, to give the opening talk. So Marianne is a former corporate development advisor with Sinanju Tankers and a former general manager of Singapore Shipping Association. So I'd like to invite Marianne. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Well, Claritex is a maritime solutions startup 
through in incubated under the Pier 71 ecosystem. And what we do is that we focus on shipping operations and commercial management. Our digital solutions aims to connect various players in the supply chain to bring about clarity, transparency, and automation of work processes. So to many of us, this is a colorful Excel worksheet, but to many bunker tank operators in Singapore, this is how they schedule bunker deliveries. That's 110 bunker deliveries to ships every day, about 50 million tons of various grades of fuel, traditional marine fuel at that, every single year here in Singapore. So needless to say, scheduling is extremely manual. It requires lots of checking, calculations to estimate cargo on board, job duration, sailing times. And when there's a delay, all this will just be cut and paste, rescheduled, perhaps even up to every two hours, every single day. So I'm sure there will be possible human errors, miscommunication, schedule conflicts, and so on. What we understand is that each bunker delivery entails hundreds of emails, phone calls, WhatsApp messages to communicate job assignments and various changes amongst the many parties involved. It is often the case to put in extra buffer time into the schedule to cater for delays of vessel surviving and leaving bunker tanker schedules unoptimized, which they could have been to its fullest potential. And it is not uncommon to see ship supplies, lighter boats, loop all deliveries, and even other port services, um, service deliveries, waiting hours for their turn to make their job because of a bunkering job being delayed. So those of you who are familiar with this are probably nodding your head right now on these observations. So what I'd like to introduce is that we, as Claritex, has developed Bunker Maestro to schedule deliveries of traditional marine fuels. Bunker Maestro is an algorithm-based SaaS platform that provides data-driven insights for bunker scheduling at increased work efficiencies, transparencies, and clarity. It taps on real-time data sets to monitor vessel movements, to predict vessel arrival times, and bunkering-related operations. Experience-based algorithms will auto-schedule bunker delivery jobs by matching vessel arrival times, bunker tanker availability, fuel type, and other relevant data. If there are scheduling conflicts, the system can suggest an alternative suitable bunker tanker. If there are changes to the vessel arrival time, the schedule can be updated at a click of a button and schedule notifications to various parties involved about the changes. The system is also able to generate management reports with analysis of pumping rates, amount of fuel delivered, and other pertinent information. So now I'm going to try to show you this video. Right. So this is Bunker Maestro in action. This is our jobs list for the upcoming days. It lists where uh, the vessel is going to be located. Um, and as you can see from the 14th of April, it's all been unassigned. So what we'll do is that we're going to run your those scheduler for the next few days. And within seconds, I hope, we should be able to show that bunker tankers have been assigned to run these jobs. So what happens is that uh, we take into consideration millions of job to barge permutations and we choose the best permutation possible to fit in as many bunker deliveries as possible to maximize the quantity delivered. So as you can see, those in yellow have been assigned the jobs for the next three days, right? So this feature potentially increases the turn rate of each bunker barge increasing fleet efficiency and revenue for suppliers. From the perspective of a bunker barge operator, this solution increases work efficiency as it reduces the need for, mutual, for manual, repetitive, and time-consuming scheduling. On the operational front, it reduces the need for excessive buffer time placed between jobs to cater for uncommunicated delays, allowing bunker operators to accept more jobs, making more turns, 
increasing vessel optimization and revenue. Now, bunker op operators will now also have data for analysis and decision making. Our target is to reduce the receiving vessel's total port stay with just in time deliveries. If we are able to save two hours for every vessel entering, let's say, Singapore, just by using Bunker Maestro, we estimate that we can potentially reduce 350,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions at our port per year. To date, we have uh, one in eight bunker tankers that have signed up with Bunker Maestro, and we anticipate a further 30% by year end. Besides Bunker Maestro, um, Claritex has already developed an analysis tool for diagnostics of mastometer data, which we call autoprofiling. So that tool is able to detect anomalies of your fuel delivery in minutes. Besides that, um, I would say in line with our webinar today, we are open to collaborating with our various partners, one of whom would be TechPlay, who will be speaking next. On the fuel quality front, we are in talks with an expert in this field. And very soon, we will also partner another company to provide end-to-end -end digitalized documentation to support every bunker loading and delivery. So from digitizing bunker sales orders, invoicing with our bunker maestros, operational and scheduling, all the way up to electronic bunker delivery notes seamlessly. So beyond bunkering, our Maestro engine is an operational scheduling platform that will optimize, connect, and synchronize all parties in the port logistics supply chain. I'm pleased to add that we are currently developing a proof of concept ship agency module for bunkering for Williamson Ship Services. Claritex has also secured contracts to develop lighter boat scheduling for ship supplies and lubricant deliveries. So our approach, integrate, and unify data across various modules of our system to achieve true digital transformation for our maritime industry. So that's all I have for today and welcome your questions later on. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Marianne. So um, if you tell invite the audience, if you want to enter questions in the Q&A box, we should have 20 minutes for, for questions at the end of the uh, talk. So, so secondly, I'd like to invite Leon Gommens, who's a co-founder of TechPlay to speak. So he's also got a background in uh, lots of uh, port startup projects around Rotterdam, co-founder of Port Lab, which develops technology system solutions for the port of Rotterdam. And he's initially an initiator of the World Port Hackathon, which is based in Rotterdam. So I'd like to invite Leon to give a talk. Thank you. You're on mute. So my screen is visible right now. Yes, yeah. it is, I guess. Okay. Well, reducing cost in bunkering and being in control on processes and, and being proactive in all these processes, which are highly collaborative, that is something that we all uh, want to achieve. And I'm going to share a bit more about digital technology and collaboration, how that can, can help in it. My name is Leon Romans, one of the founders of TechPlay. And first of all, let me introduce a bit more about TechPlay. If I need to introduce TechPlay, I always mention like we see ourselves as a context broker, as Carl was mentioning. And we really uh, provide our clients with insights that help them to make better informed decision in all kinds of processes related to port calling and related to bunkering operations. We were founded in 2015, currently 27 people, uh, and our aim and focus is global. So we are globally providing this information to optimize the maritime supply chain. Um, we are already delivering global, started out in Europe, rather than uh, moved to Singapore, where we are now two years and happily uh, also collaborating with, uh, with Claritex, and also uh, moved to the US uh, and uh, South America, uh, where we are delivering uh, services. And we're forming strategic partnerships to really take the road on this on this globalization effort because yeah, it is uh, one port is one port and in the maritime industry it's all about many ports and the vessels moving around from port to port where we need to optimize. Um, so what is it that our value proposition is? What we offer is better insights, less waste, as simple as that. And I will share you a bit more on that. 
And if you look at the clients that we typically are servicing, uh, you will see like we are in the heart of the, uh, the, the maritime operation, the port call, and also in the supply chain. So you will see shipping lines, you will see terminals, you will see port authorities, the triangle who is uh, conducting a port call, agents who are uh, orchestrating uh, the port calls, and uh, other than that, also suppliers or operators who are doing service deliveries uh, on, on vessels like bunkering operations. So taking this one step uh, uh, deeper, we will see that we facilitate the consistently faster and more efficient port operations. And we do that and bunker operations. And we do that through offering enhanced trusted and shared visibility. And let's have a look at the Artemis who visited the uh, port of Singapore. And if we look at a port call process, it is really a simple process. It's an inbound process, a port state process, and an outbound process. But if we take one step deep, uh, take one step deeper, you really see a, it's a highly collaborative process with a nautical process on the inbound part, with cargo operations going on, with alongside operations on Anchorage or alongside of the terminal, uh, and uh, bunkers being delivered, water supplies being delivered, and again an outbound process. A lot of stakeholders involved, and of course. Um, as happens in the world, uh, things tend to go differently or uh, issues might occur. So, for instance, if a pilot is not available, that will, of course, impact the entire sup uh, supply chain and will cause, cause cascading effects. Delays will, delays will cause more delays. And, of course, everyone is running its own process and needs to be in control of that process and one needs to have this information on that process. So visibility is key in this part. And this is uh, where we took a deep dive into really diving into what kind of information is required in port calling, what kind of information is required within uh, uh, the bunkering operations. And what you typically see at this point in time, and Marianne did show the spreadsheet, uh, I think this is a typical way uh, that is being worked. A lot of phone calls are being made, information is passed on by phone, emails are being sent out, documents are shared, and all this is not really well connected. Uh, much of the information is even not digitally available uh, at that point in time. It's fragmented, uh, not real time, because documents, yeah, they might be, uh, they might have come in uh, already hours or, or, or half a day earlier. And, the other thing is the reluctance to sharing within the industry. And of course, this impacts all port call actors. There's a lack of visibility through because of this limited data and transparency. Um, the data quality is an issue and uh, the digital, the low digitization is an issue. Uh, of course, this results also in a low level of predictability. We did do some calculations, it's up to 85 billion. You actually can see, uh, Marianne came up with the numbers of uh, savings per hour, 50% in the LNG bunkering, but uh, huge numbers. And we are even on the conservative side in this part. So what is our solution? What are we delivering? We have created a shared point of truth, which is automatically monitoring and keeping an eye on what is happening in ports. Uh, we automatically detect times, uh, events that are happening. We create the timestamps of what did happen. And of course, this is nice to know what did happen and what is happening at this point in time. But on top of that, we do have the predictions on what is going to happen, which actually will help you to create a smartest plan uh, feasible. And all this comes together in what we call our support reporting solution, uh, where we give this visibility, where we have this predictability. And there are a couple of building blocks which build up this solution. We'll dive into it detail, but each this information can be used by all actors, being the shipping lines, being the terminals, being the service providers and the agents as well. So the building blocks, the first building blocks is about the map to, uh, context and the events. This is actually uh, showing how the support look like, what, are, uh, what is the infrastructure, where's the infrastructure, what type of processes are there, what are the rules and the regulations within this, uh, within this uh, uh, port. All this is act actively monitored and uh, detected. And it's nice that you know it, but of course you need to inform people who are relevant to that. And that's the second module. That's about the event notifications where people are actually notified on things that are relevant to them and that uh, change. Again, predictions, key. It's nice to know what is happening. Of course, these will cause triggers, but the predictions are key. And as we know, uh, much of the things that needs to, need to be captured for the processes, for the billing, for the, for the, for the disbursements, accounts, et cetera. So we also create ESOFs, electronic statement of facts and timestamps, which give insight on what actually did happen in that part. 
So I was talking about the Artemis one uh, arriving in, in Singapore. Uh, let's have a look on, on what it is. You should actually see over here all the timestamps that we automatically did detect continuously within this trip. So that's like the ETA, the nomination, when was the vessel expected, but also all actual uh, uh, points of arrival, the 16 nautical mile, the 12 nautical mile, the actual arrival at the pilot boarding place, and the dropping of the anchor at a anchorage. But I think taking this perspective towards the bunker operations and bunkering that is going on, we are also capable of detecting all alongside operations that are taking place. So uh, uh, the Sega did arrive uh, at 1319 and did depart again. We also see the water taxis arriving. We see uh, uh, supply barges arriving. And on, with the tools that we develop, you get a, a good visibility on what did happen in a port call. But as mentioned, it's not about what did happen. It's also about continuously monitoring and knowing, uh, being alerted on a, a specific moment in time. So we do have a, a subscription model, a no notification model where you can subscribe to all these events. I did show in the earlier picture that it was an API. Uh, of course, all these systems do have a user interface, but they also can be connected, are in many cases connected towards uh, the systems uh, and integrated seamlessly into the solutions that, uh, that are being created. So the notifications is one, and taking a dive into uh, the alongside operation, you actually can have the supply barge and uh, start time and end time, but you can also be notified uh, on things that, are, that you do expect to happen and are, did not yet happen or are not making it. So by that, you are actually proactive and being in control on things that are, that are not going to happen within a port pool. So what is it that, what kind of insights do we bring to the, to the table in this bunkering ship to ship operations and cargo operations? It's all about visibility. So there's real time view on a port call and the port state, you actually know what is happening. Because it's about predictability. It's the ETA of the receiving vessel. It's the ETA of the bunker vessel, but it's also the departing time at the terminal or the receiving vessel of a bunker barge. It allows you to be in control and proactive through this real time monitoring and being alert uh, on all things that are happening. And of course, in hindsight, it's all about auditability and factual. We do have the ESOFs, the timestamps. You can use this type of information, which is independently created for every vessel for benchmarking, and you can have a look back in the traces. And well, what does it bring? What kind of savings does it bring? Uh, it's all about for the shipping line, a shorter port stay. It's saving these hours that come out of it. Uh, and, and by creating this information position, which is available to everyone uh, through solutions like Claritex is offering or like DMV is offering. It's for service provider about increased asset utilization, being able to uh, uh, schedule more or plan more uh, bunker deliveries and not planning in waste in that kind of stuff. Better staff utilization and of course, better customer satisfaction. Terminals is about shorter burst visits, reduced demerge, and also better staff utilization. And the agent who is doing a lot of the coordination can also step into this game and increase this utilization and be more in control and proactive. Clients know, and, uh, know us for being proactive in this part and engaging with the industry. Uh, I'll skip this slide. And I really would like to invite all people say like, if you would like to have more information or more uh, insights in what kind of insights we can offer you as a company, feel free to reach out. Uh, and thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, so I think that the challenge is emerging. We can all see the potential here, but how we get this stuff moving and who's going to drive it, I guess is a very, very difficult question. But uh, now thirdly, we'd like to invite Jan Anders Reister, who's a senior consultant with DNV, who works with its Fuel Boss product to speak. So he's based in Akerhus in Norway, and he's a former environmental advisor with both Linden Norway and BG Group. So we're going to talk specifically about LNG bunkering. So I'd like to welcome Jan Anders, please. Thank you very much, Carl. Get my screen up and going. Yep, it's fine. Nice. I'm really glad to be here today um, and a big thanks to the Digital Ship for hosting this event. Um, today I'll be talking about how we in DNV are digitalizing LNG bunkering with FuelBoss. So um, the way LNG uh, bunkering is done today is um, quite traditional and uh, both Leon and Marianne touched upon this. 
Uh, it's basically a process of um, ordering, uh, of scheduling the bunkering operation and executing the bunkering operation itself with all the um, uh, documentation that's required for that process. Um, these are the core processes, and it's not really different to that for conventional fuel. However, the LNG market is dominated by long-term contracts, and some of these have rather strict regimes regarding the advanced ordering of fuel and keeping schedules up to date. So keeping in line with the contractual terms of ordering fuel and keeping everyone involved informed can become quite a time-consuming and tedious task. Um, and as the others have uh, stated as well, um, most of the tools being used are rather manual, uh, be it uh, email, phone, um, paper, pen, scanning documents, etc. Um, and then we have, after a bunkering operation is done, um, you'd essentially like to analyze uh, the data coming from that bunkering operation. But when you have uh, manual papers, uh, scanned PDFs, etc., how easy is it to analyze and find patterns in that data? The answer is essentially, it's really difficult and that's why people don't do it. Um, also for this process, um, there are instances uh, where you need to find a new supplier. For example, um, if you're outside uh, of an area uh, where you'd have a long-term contract, you need to find a, a new supplier who can deliver fuel, which can also be quite difficult. Um, as Carl stated as well, uh, the logistics costs um, constitute a significant share uh, of the cost of delivered LNG, meaning that driving efficiency in any of these steps of the process um, and finding ways to optimize uh, will be beneficial in lowering the cost of fuel. So that's why we thought we need to find ways to digitalize this work process. Um, we need to standardize the way things are done. Um, we need to automate all work processes where we have a possibility to, to, to do that, be it using technology like TechPlace um, or uh, integrating our software with um, our customers' systems to automate the, the process of um, flow of da data. And then we must make sure to harvest the benefits of analyzing the data that's created through the process. And ultimately, we need to find ways to collaborate in order to optimize uh, operations and to increase the utilization of the LNG bunk vessels. So going back to this picture, um, this is where we saw that we as DNV uh, can make a positive contribution and have an impact. So we started on the path of digitizing the LNG bunkering operations and we found tech play along the way. Since then, we've had a very positive partnership with um, tech play who are essentially running the main engine of FuelBoss. And together we have created the industry platform for LNG bunkering of ships. So instead of doing it this way, we do it in this way, meaning that all involved stakeholders are on the platform. They have instant access to the same information. Uh, people can work together. They work in a standardized format on a global scale. And the platform acts as this shared point of truth, which Leon touched upon. So you might ask, why, why is this important? Well, the, ease is, the answer is quite simple. Um, because with a growing number of LNG powered vessels, the picture will become increasingly cluttered with a significant increase in stakeholders on both sides of the table. Uh, if all of these do uh, these processes in their own way, we'll end up in a situation which becomes unbearable for the buyers of fuel. So instead, we need to make sure we standardize while we still can and avoid any pitfalls. And as I said, uh, the, it's a growing number of LNG powered vessels. Um, we just finished our monthly updates on the uptake of alternative fuels and shipping. And wow, it's been a great start for LNG bunkering this year. In March alone, we recorded the highest number of orders for LNG fuel ships in a month since we started counting 10 years ago with 21 ships uh, being ordered. So that brings the year-to-date order um, to nearly 50 ships already matching the number of orders from all of last year. And then I'll come back to this one again. Um, 
what we see is that uh, in order to find a supplier, we needed to facilitate uh, a spot marketplace. So we have that in place so that the, uh, the buyers can go onto the platform and can find a supplier and can reach the entire market through the platform. Also, this core process of um, ordering and planning and execution of the bunkering operation is facilitated through the nomination and bunkering module in Fuelboss. And lastly, we have a bunker dashboard, which uh, facilitates uh, showing all the data from the bunkering operations. And then we have some um, clever uh, additional features currently being released, uh, which is that once you have a digital platform in place, uh, it's really easy to facilitate collaboration across the industry. Um, we before have made, uh, made it possible for a supplier to collaborate with other suppliers, uh, where in cases they can't actually deliver on their obligations um, in a location, they can delegate the um, bunkering to another supplier. So meaning that um, supplier A can uh, either hire in supplier B or supplier C or whoever in the markets they want to collaborate with to execute the bunkering for them. Meaning that as a buyer, you can reach out to your regular supplier and they will be able to collaborate with others to provide fuel. Um, the great thing about this is that the work process is the same. The documentation is the same and all parties get access to the data from these operations in the same way. Uh, and that's in the bunker dashboard. So talking about the bunker dashboard, um, this is how it's uh, currently often done. It ends up as a, a receipt from the bunkering operation a PDF in a mailbox and isn't used anywhere. So instead, we have introduced a full dashboard where all the data from uh, the planning and execution of the bunkering operation is gathered, making it possible for uh, both parties uh, to see what has actually gone on and to start actually analyzing data and making real use of it. Um, and here you can see that we have um, totals uh, for the year, uh, efficiency of the bunkering operations coming from the statement of facts, and all you know, kinds of data coming from the bunker delivery notes. So this is something uh, the buyers especially have uh, made, have shown that we really appreciate. So just to sum up, um, FuelBoss is a digital tool for buyers and suppliers to plan and execute LNG bunkering operations. Um, it provides a standardized digital work process for improved operational efficiency. Um, we facilitate seamless collaboration between suppliers for increased bunker vessel utilization. Everyone has instant access to the news changes and agreements with a complete audit trail. Um, everyone gets advanced data insights from their bunkering operations in one dashboard. We have a spot marketplace uh, for the buyers to reach out to the market. And it's been developed with, in cooperation with some of the most experienced players in the LNG bunkering industry. Best of all, it's free to use for the buyers of LNG fuel, which I think is a real benefit. You can go and watch a video uh, as well on our site, uh, which explains um, some of the things I've, I've been through today. And if you'd like to get in touch with us to learn more, please feel free to contact us uh, directly. Thank you. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, John. OK, so I'd like to invite everyone to open the, the Q&A box on, on, your, on your Zoom. So there's a few questions coming already. I noticed that the first two questions are about bunker quality, and I don't think we're, we're looking at bunker quality. I, mean, LN, I think LNG, the quality issues don't matter that much, I, I suppose. And I think um, Tech Play and Claritex are not looking at the quality of the bunkers themselves. Is there any comment um, anybody would like to make about bunker quality issues? I know it's a bigger... One of the biggest challenges for shipping companies at the moment, I think, isn't it? Maybe that's for Leon and Marianne, is it? Um, maybe to add from, from our perspective, uh, we are uh, uh, collaborating uh, with different players like Flaritex, with, uh, like DN, uh, DMV. Uh, and of course, in a bunker operation, uh, there will be measurements on the, on the quality uh, through survey, etc. 
But as tech play, we are mainly focusing on uh, uh, providing insights on uh, the timestamps on when did happen what, and not really on the quality uh, on the quality level of that. But of course, the process can be facilitated, and I think Marianne, uh, you should uh, pick that one up in, in, in what you were doing uh, in that part. Now, unfortunately, as well, um, we are not focusing on the quality side of things. Um, we do have a partner um, in mind who is already um, testing their system pretty extensively with a few um, mainline operators. So uh, we hope to be able to work with him um, within the next year or two uh, so that bunker quality can also be incorporated in the entire um, bunkering ecosystem of digitization. Yeah, well, another issue is coordinating the surveyor as well, Leon, because I think surveyors is a big part of tech play, isn't it? How you can be a big hold up waiting for the surveyor to arrive. Is that a relevant yeah, point? Uh, uh, correct. Of course, it's about informing everyone uh, uh, what is happening at a certain point in time or what is expected to happening. So this is part of the process. And I think from the quality perspective uh, with the LNG bunkering, uh, we are capturing that kind of information that maybe, John, uh, you uh, can pick that one up. Yeah, I, I can elaborate a bit because in LNG, it's a, it's a bit different uh, because the LNG is um, uh, measured in with the gas chromatographs, meaning that you have the composition and the quality of the fuel uh, from those readings. Um, if we have a bunkering on a terminal, uh, that is done on the terminal itself and the, and the data is, um, can either be automatically transferred to fuel boss or it could be manually uh, entered into the system. We have a separate module for that so you can keep track of the quality uh, on a terminal or on a bunker vessel uh, up to date at any time. And also for the, for the bunker vessels, they have these gas chromatographs on board, meaning that they actually read the quality of the data as it's transferred. Um, currently, we're working with one of the biggest uh, equipment manufacturers in the world to see if we can automate um, data flow from the metering systems directly into FuelBoss, uh, automating that process and, and uh, uh, trying to kind of make these in individual uh, uh, steps of punching data, etc. obsolete. Oh, okay. So if we go to Glenn Muller's question, so he's asking, where is the data stored? With which parties is it shared with? I think the answer is different for all three of you. I guess the data is all cloud hosted and it's shared with whoever you make a commercial agreements with. Um, is there any, any anything further you'd like to say about for, for Glenn's question? Maybe you start with Leon, shall we? Is it a, you've got the most yep. complicated da data sharing <laughs> with the commercial uh, side uh, as well. Uh, uh, uh. Our starting point is really from we collect whatever is publicly available. So that is, that is our starting point. But of course, if we are uh, engaging with a client and he is adding information based on which we can uh, give additional insights, we will not share that. So we are storing information in our core system and client-based information is uh, in, uh, stored in separate uh, um, uh, areas. And of course, if... Um, collaboration is required. Uh, there can be agreements in place which facilitate that coordination and information sharing can, can be taken place, but based on the agreements and based on the approval of uh, uh, the client in that part. Uh, so it's a combination on having a public, uh, public view and on top of that, uh, adding your uh, own perspectives and getting better insights and enabling our clients to uh, collaborate in, 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 these, uh, in these type of uh, processes like bunkering. Well, John and Marianne, I don't know if you want to add anything about the data storage and sharing. Um, yeah, I can say a few words on our end. Um, we have a kind of onion-based approach to the security of data, meaning that we have several layers um, of data security, um, which is uh, according to uh, internal procedures on how to uh, create these types of software. Uh, and the data is, uh, or the platform is cloud-based. Um, all contractual terms, et cetera, is agreed between the stakeholders outside of the platform. Uh, but within the platform, um, you have to keep a register of who you have a contractual relationship with in order to get access to connect to those. Um, and also um, you choose um, quite specifically who has access to what type of data. And we have different levels of access rights depending on user roles. So it's quite strict in order to keep all the data secure and to make sure that um, especially confidential information is kept between the, the stakeholders. 
Wow, yeah. okay. Same now, thing with Computex. All um, the data is also cloud-based. Um, with our various clients, we have them um, put into uh, various servers. For data security, we are looking into penetration tests, uh, hoping that uh, we'll be ISO certified uh, within the next year as well. Um, data, of course, is of a primary concern to, to all our clients and to us. So uh, we have to make sure that uh, we will comply to all um, that's in the contract and that is um, in place even from the very start already before we start um, the project with them. Wow, that's great. Okay, so if you turn to Daniel Gann's question, so this is the million dollar question about how we get this stuff moving. I think Daniel might be the senior executive at Sumitomo Corporation in Singapore from his uh, LinkedIn page, but uh, what's the biggest sticking point when approaching the industry to adopt the tech solution? So I, I tried to come up with an answer with this at the beginning. If we say, look, there's enormous savings here that can change the whole industry, but we can all see it's so fragmented and so difficult with so many different players and everybody's got different reasons for doing what they do. Um, and the successful workarounds, I think Leon, well, you've all got different commercial models. I guess this is the underlying story here is working out a commercial model. Maybe we'd like to see oil companies pushing this, like um, chartering associations and things. And I don't know um, where, where we start with this question, but there's definitely the most important question on the table here, isn't it? Um, should we start with John this time, do you think? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's always difficult uh, trying to make people adapt to new solutions. Um, and especially since people are so used to using emails and phone, etc. Um, it's difficult to try to explain that uh, doing it digitally is just as easy or often easier uh, than doing it the way you're doing it today. Uh, but then when you start looking at the benefits of actually doing it that way, that's when people try to suddenly understand um, why this is uh, of interest. So for, for the sellers of fuel, um, it's essentially about this picture I was um, thinking of uh, with an increasing number of vessels, um, uh, both on the buyer and supply side, it will be become a more increasingly complex picture with many stakeholders, uh, meaning that if uh, these uh, sellers start making their own individual solutions, it will become real difficult for the buyers uh, having to use a specific solution for each and every supply they use. So many of the suppliers have seen that we need to try to standardize and we need to find a way to do this in a common way towards uh, our customers. Uh, and essentially also collaborating across the industry and driving uh, or increasing utilization of these vessels um, as they come on water uh, is of real interest to, to the suppliers. And on the buyer side, um, it's, it's, as I said, it's really easy for them to use a phone and email. But essentially, when they see this dashboard, they see, aha, there's so many processes going on where we can harvest this data and so have this um, accessible at an instant uh, in the software. So those are the kind of main stickiness points for, for, for the ones that we're working towards. It's easier to imagine a sort of integrated system for the whole industry with LNG than for the whole rest of everything, because LNG, I guess, is simpler and less fragmented. So maybe that's a different kind of case. It's, it? it's a it's a it's a less mature uh, industry uh, which hasn't uh, kind of uh, settled yet, where we have room to standardize, uh, and I guess that's why um, the industry is also kind of trying to find ways to do that. Well, should we go to Marianne next? Do you have any, any comments on what's the biggest sticking point when getting the industry to adopt the tech solution? Do you think? That... Well, um, I hope Daniel isn't the one who's like causing some um, problems for us by, by restraining um, the contract signing or things like that. Yeah, um, we, we have difficulties, um, you know, getting companies, you know, to sign a dotted line. Um, Many of them whom we have spoken to admit that Bunker Maestro is really a good system, is able to deliver on what we have promised in terms of the benefits. Um, but somehow they wish that um, there could be more to it or it could be collaborated with um, other forms of maybe documentation or, or some, some other um, parties upstream or downstream. So there may be other points which they wish that it'll be as perfect as possible. But I find that it is really um, not really possible to, to have a perfect system from the start. 
we hope that uh, we're able to, to actually have some uh, POC contracts in place so that we, from the start, um, discuss uh, with the clients what they really want out of the system and we develop it. Um, and I think through that, we get to understand, they get to trust us a bit more and we will be able to finally roll that the project out with them. So um, we are very happy to note that there are clients who believe in us and who trust us enough to join us in POC, such as like uh, I mentioned, like Williamson Ship Services, for instance. So um, going forward, um, we hope that with a bigger and a bigger client base, um, it would be like a we has, uh, with such backing by them also, we hope that Daniel uh, would be able to say yes, I'm willing to sign a dollar line and let's let's go with it. Yeah. Oh, very good. So, Leon, do you want to share, share your thoughts? I guess this is time to talk about the context brokering model, is it? Or, yeah, uh... I guess so. I think uh, from our perspective, if I look at the industry, what I see, there is money on the table at this point in time. And it's also about picking up that money. And I think this is the, the, the key point, what we are enabling. The technology, the transparency, the data that is available is already offering insights which can be made, uh, uh, can be used to increase efficiency, to reduce waste already. Um, and uh, of course, it is first about showing, and this is about why, why it's so important to be a contact broker and really have a deep understanding on what are the processes within the industry, how, how, how are processes typically being run, how does an infrastructure look like that? But once you've got that and you can really don't know how the game is played, you can get insights which you can use and which you can get money from. And it can either be through an application uh, like the one I showed, but it can also be through uh, an API integration. And, and there are some uh, really exciting uh, data points that we have. Uh, uh, for instance, in Houston, we are working on one case where we uh, actually can already detect like notices of readiness being dropped in advance before people uh, know uh, that uh, it was being dropped and people can stop preparing uh, the, the, the terminal, et cetera, et cetera. So this kind of insights and also that it holds for, for bunkers, these type of insights is money that can be uh, uh, taken directly. It, it takes some thinking, it takes some hard work to really get and, and organize your processes, but with public information, you are capable of improving your processes. And more importantly, uh, we really believe in this, in this self-organizational way. Uh, there is money on the table, so it's a first step, but it's also about once it's known that you can see these kind of things, a collaboration also becomes easier because you do not have to be af afraid about that people are seeing things or could see things from you that you do not want to share. Uh, things basically are becoming visible. So again, this is also a facilitator from our perspective in, in, in taking this to the collaborative model. Uh, so it's a step-by-step -step model uh, uh, based on really deep insights into the industry and then uh, uh, reaching out to one another. So that, that is my two cents on, uh, on, on how to make it work. Uh, Oh, okay. So Taras Pavliuk, I think he's a, a satellite engineer with applied satellite technology in the UK, but he's asking about the hardware with tech player. As I understand it, there's no hardware, it's all cloud and software. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, and I think he might be referring to, to uh, installations on the vessel. Uh, but no, we are using public information which is being available. So that is a yes information as a source, but also for community systems, also uh, weather information hardware information, that kind of information is being used uh, continuously. Uh, and, and it's about combining and knowing what you're combining mm -hmm. that will uh, provide these insights that we are creating. Okay, so, so Walter Vollebrecht is a community finance executive in the Netherlands. So he's asking, uh, can we copy this to other industries? I guess we're just focusing on the bunker industry for now, aren't we? <laughs> any, any thoughts? Maybe that's, uh, I don't know, which, uh, which we've got three different solutions. So maybe it's, uh, for Leon, perhaps he's talking about yours as in the Netherlands. <laughs> Do you want to answer that one? Um, yeah, Walter, I, I, I know Walter actually. I, I, oh. I think it's uh, the, the, the buyer perspective and the game that is being played. Uh, you refer, uh, I guess Walter is referring to the, the DMV game and buyers combining and making that, that work. Um, uh, I think it's a very powerful mechanism uh, to drive uh, uh, demand, uh, to, funnel, to, to funnel the demand uh, and, and, and use that as a standardization mechanism. Um, yeah, I, I would like to have, uh, would like, love to have a chat about, uh, on how you could apply it in different industries. And I guess, John, maybe you wanna, want to elaborate on it, but... Uh, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, 
uh, from a technical standpoint, uh, when having created a, a scalable solution like we have together with TechPlay, it's it's quite easy to adopt to uh, different things. Be it, um, further out in the supply chain uh, of the bunkering industry, um, for instance, we see that uh, expanding into new uh, alternative fuels um, is quite easy. And as such, uh, bringing it technically to other industries um, should be feasible uh, with such a scalable solution. However, uh, the time spent in market uh, discussing with, um, with the different companies um, is it, really demanding. We spend a huge amount of time discussing um, and talking about all the benefits uh, to really get the, the markets uh, to, to go with. Oh, I mean, something that maybe is worth clarifying. So we're talking about three separate systems here, but they all link together. So um, Marianne and Claritex, I think that's more sort of software based for coordinating bunker vessels. And then uh, the uh, fuel boss with the DNV, that's more of a kind of trading platform. And then tech players are kind of coordinating everything. So I guess we can see how they can all link together, but they also have different business models, which I, I guess that's the hardest part. But I suppose that's a, I don't know if anybody has any any any, any comment to make about how, now these different things go together. There's another question coming from Tony. Maybe I'll, I'll read that while. I... <laughs> Maybe I could I could pick pick this one up. What what I do see is like uh, um, uh, within our vision, we believe really that you start from insights. You create tools that help you to to improve your processes, and it's all aimed at collaboration uh, to 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 improve the collaboration uh, part. Um, and that will then, of course, in, also uh, contribute towards uh, sustainability. But the the point being is, is if you look at the way how DMV and uh, TechPlay are working together, we have set up a, a technology stack which facilitates this uh, collaboration. We do have some insights, and we combine that together in the in that part. The same way we are looking uh, with the Claritex in 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 the, in the in Singapore and Rotterdam area on like how can we optimize port call and bunkering operations in that uh, in that respect. And so. It's also uh, uh, starting by doing uh, in that respect and, and, and learn while you go and, and, and do not be too afraid. Don't be too afraid about that. People might walk away with you, with your ideas. And, uh, I think there are so many good ideas. It's really uh, the trust and, 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 and the working together, which, which will bring the value uh, to the table eventually. Oh, so, so Tony's question is about um, different rules that apply in a port. So something can only happen after something else. So, for example, you can only deliver bunkers after you've done the cargo operation. So I guess that has to incorporate, be incorporated into your software. But software is quite good at putting in little rules and restrictions. Maybe Marianne, is that something you'd like to answer about uh, how you yeah, incorporate different? That's, that's, that's indeed uh, something that we are looking into and in, uh, expanding our bunker maestro to become... Um, well, rather, we, we get the data in from Bunker Maestro uh, into our Maestro engine. And from there, uh, we add on like the timestamps uh, from the entire port stay, uh, port call itself. So even when uh, I think Tony's mentioning about uh, the cargo arm disconnection, we will all factor all that information in. That's why we're also working with shipping agencies because they've got um, uh, a lot of the information that vessel coming in and all the various um, uh, other activities like receiving water or getting ship supplies and everything. So we're also going into, let's say, the lighter boat scheduling or the loop all um, deliveries or even up to the scheduling of your, your surveyor, for instance. So all these various um, activities can then be put into one uh, maestro platform. And through this sort of information, there's like seamless connection um, between the various activities and as complete or oversight by, by everyone who's uh, involved with it. So we hope that through that, uh, things can actually become more efficient and more transparent um, and yes, uh, reduce the port call. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we're, we're coming up to the end now. It's time to show our poll again, Vida, if you'd like to put it up. So the, the purpose of this poll was trying to show how, uh, or if you've persuaded anybody about how the enormous uh, savings are available here but based on your answers I think you were all quite persuaded before we even started I think 53% said you thought there could be uh, savings of over one and a half percent on all 
of uh, all the costs of running a ship by more efficient bunker operations. But maybe if you put in your, your answer here and uh, by this, should we see what, uh, what, uh, what, what the answers are, if they've changed? Oh, so they, they've actually uh, <laughs> gone down for uh, above one and a half percent, though they've gone up from a 42 percent to we, we had a 42 on a answer B when we started. And now it's 58 percent. So I guess that's, uh, that's well, it's growing, growing a response from that one. So C, we had a 53 percent when we started and now it's 42 percent. I'd say above. One and a half percent savings, that's quite a lot. But if we think we can get a half to one and a half percent, there's a good consensus around the audience that uh, that's possible. Then uh, I don't know, Leon, do you want to any, uh, make any comments on these uh, polls? I think I think we, we dropped a bit because everyone ran off to uh, see, uh, start uh, making uh, making the savings already. <laughs> eventually, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 what I see is uh, there is there is a large potential and uh, and a lot of uh, of things. And as I was mentioning, like it's it's also about uh, starting with this digitization uh, is a first step and leveraging the information that is already there and uh, uh, try to incorporate that into systems. And of course, standardization, automation, all these kinds of things kick in and eventually that will, uh, from our perspective, bring big savings. Uh, and I, 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 I would go for the optimistic part above 1.5%. Well, John and Marianne, do you want to make any, any final comments about the poll? Um, I, I, I support what Leon is saying as well. Yeah, I think we, we should be a bit more optimistic in how much we can actually save. Uh, it's not a matter of um, coming together now, um, adopting technology. Um, there are a lot of innovations that's out there. Um, don't wait for too long. Um, let's just make things uh, work now. Yeah. Well, John, you want to? Yeah, I think for, for LNG specifically, it's um, it's a matter of everyone scrambling to get their vessels on the water at the moment. Um, but we shouldn't forget to try to utilize the time we have uh, to all those vessels that are on the water to do this standardization to actually get those gains once the vessels are on the water. Um, so I, I really think there are huge uh, um, possibilities for improvements and we've already seen that we can save uh, quite a lot of time for each and every bunkering operation. So when more vessels are on the water, there's more customers to be served. Wow, fantastic. Well, this is the first time we've covered this subject in any digital ship webinar. It's a phenomenally uh, a new new art area of maritime where there's looks like there's uh, great savings to be made. So I guess we'll all uh, <laughs> get to work. So I'll thank you very much, everyone. I'll pass back to Vida for the closing words. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. So summing up, we learned about Claritex, TechPlay and DNV Fuel Boss working to reduce cost in bunkering. We'll send you some follow-up material, also the video recording tomorrow. Also tomorrow we are hosting another webinar about advances in e-learning. You may still sign up at, at webinars.thedigitalship.com. Now Digital Ship is logging off until tomorrow, 10 a.m. London time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.